Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome to another edition of Kerbal Space Program Amateur Hour with Fraggle. And, and today, the Kerbals have realized that their science collector, this guy here, can in fact reach the moon. After crushing the numbers with the uh, recently collected science data, they have discovered that this thing can actually get there and back. So, we're just going to throw this thing up there, collect as much science as we can, and attempt to recover it in one piece. Alright, without too much screwing around, let's just go ahead and uh, we'll turn on SAS and do our very brief count. And throw this thing up in the air. Five, four, two, one. Away we go, we'll do our quick rotate here, so we can get her up into a nice equatorial orbit. Trim her out a little bit, and start nosing her over. And as usual, there's a little bit of fighting going on. No, I don't want to go that way. Stop it! We'll fling her up and we'll try and get her into a uh, an orbit with a high Aquabs. We can use that to kind of slingshot us off towards the moon. All right, let's get rid of those. Now we've got the uh, liquid booster going. I can nose her over a bit more. Oh, come on, come on, no. There we go. And boop, there's our Perry Apps coming up. I think I have adjusted this a little too much. Uh oh. Getting low on fuel. 68. 69. Come on! It's like pushing a pebble uphill. And 70, there we go. Swing! Alright, we are now in a slightly inclined orbit. Holy moly! That's quite a high app, perhaps. <laughs> we'll get rid of these. So we can start charging our uh, batteries once more in the bright Kerbin sunshine. Now, I just need to find myself a, uh, a meeting with the moon. So there's the moon there. I'll set that as a target. Ding. And we will guess a place to place our maneuver node. And, yep, I put it in the wrong place again every time. I always forget it's on the opposite side because I'm doing that like sling shoddy kind of deal. Uh, hmm. Uh, okay, I'll add some more thrust. No encounter yet. Ooh. Add some more th what? So, wait a minute. What? Oh, it's because I'm aiming at where the moon currently is. I need to aim. Okay, add some more. That's my ascending node. Up, oh, aha! Now we have an encounter. There we are. See in there? Closest approach. So now I've got that. I need to get. Where's the other one at? Well, they're a long way apart. <laughs> I need to get those two as close together as I can. So there we go. There is an encounter. All right. So now I've got that. I can start taking away some of my. change in speed to save some fuel. Because rather than just pointing at the moon and hammering the hammering the rocket until we run out of fuel, let's actually try and get this as close as we can. That looks like it's pretty damn close. Adjust this a little more. There's a nice one there. That looks pretty good to me. I wonder how much fuel that's going to take. Alright, so I just need to add uh, 658 meters per second to my uh, current velocity. Wait, is that add? Yeah, that's add. I'm heading up towards.
Wait, that's retro. Oh, ah, because I'm on the wrong side of the planet, so that's retrograde right now. When they come round to the other side of the planet, that will be the prograde marker. And then they add 658.1 meters per second. So, let's hit the quick save. And we're going to go take a break whilst we, uh, we take an hour and ten minutes to fly around. Alrighty, we've got about a minute to our burn. So we're going to do our usual uh, monotony of uh, making sure we're lined up. Uh, yep, it's looking pretty good, pretty good. We should have enough fuel to complete this burn in this last stage. We'll hit quick save. And we're just going to enjoy the view for a few moments before we actually continue our, uh, our burn. 30 seconds out. seconds to go. This is potentially the moment of truth for the uh, engineers. Do we have our calculations correct? Six, five, there we are, let's start our burn. Oh, we don't have enough fuel to do the whole thing. Oops. Right. Get rid of that. Start our next bit. Plus 10 seconds. And cut the engine. There we go. Right. That should get us pretty close, I think. Let's have a look, see here. Uh, ah. Maybe not. Okay, there's our there's our closest approach. Um I'm going to have to make an adjustment, otherwise I'm going to miss it. Yeah, damn it. Alright, so when we get here... We'll make our adjustment. Okay, back here. Oh, way right back here. Oh, yeah. Close to the periaps. Okay, so if we do it here, we'll get another encounter. Okay, I have to add another 25.5 meters per second. I've got to do that in about seven minutes. Okie dokie, so we are now in our encounter with the moon. Get rid of this maneuver node now. Hang on. Wait a minute. Uh oh. I think I have a bit of a problem here. Looks like I'm going to impact the moon. Oh dear. So let's make an adjustment to our trajectory. <laughs> That's better. There we go. Now our periapse is not inside the moon surface. Uh, so let's see if we can get... Oh, no. No, no. We'll just... Oh! Look! Look at Kerb and you can see the moon shadow. That's pretty cool. Okay, anyway. Let's get this... Sorted out six kilometers, 14 kilometers. Yeah, 14 kilometers is pretty close. I think I should be able to get some good, uh, some good signs from that. But I'm going to be going pretty quick. See, the issue now is that I'm stuck in the uh, the shadow of the moon, so I got to be careful on my power usage. But uh, it's a nice view up here. seconds and fire Off we go. there we go look at that yes congratulations apparently we have a stable orbit around the moon oh, I get two achievements for that sweet and my apoapsis Fair distance. So let's see if we can set up our. Uh, we'll get rid of this. Let's see if we can set up our return uh, maneuver. Definitely going to have to add fuel. Or add, uh, sorry, add velocity to escape. Um, I'm going to put this. Uh, well, that's not good. That's just not changing. Uh, that's. Whoa. 
it's not good either. It's a huge orbit around Kirk, but it's never going to work. Um, ah, you know what? I think what I've got to do... I think I've got to do the whole uh, uh, slingshot thing like I did coming out of Kerbin. So I'm going to go around. <laughs> it's quite an orbit there. Uh, ah, wait a minute, what's this? What if I adjust this? Aha. Oh. Add, no, no, take first away. No, that's adding, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Aha, wait, what was that? That's what we need. That's what we need. That's a nice... Well, it's not a nice return. Okay, it gives me 650. It's not enough. What if I... Whoa, whoops. Whee! Off in the deep space that way. 527. Uh, okay, well... Well, that's a change of 143. Three meters per second. I think I can probably afford that. Uh, hmm. So let's, let's see if we can save a little. Okay, get this lower. One hundred and ninety-six. Six should be fine for the minute. Okay, but I've got to go all the way around and come back again before I can do anything. So that's 158.8 meters per second. Right. I got the fuel for that. Welcome to the sunrise over the moon. That marks a couple of things for us. A, we're progressing around the moon quite quickly. B, we are now getting electric charge. Look at that. It should start going up in a minute. There we go, 211, 212. So we can start working on our science. So, so let's start the uh, radar scan. I swear that's supposed to animate or something. All right, let's look at this. Let's check the irradiant scanners. needs to be pointed at. Oh, no, you know what? Let's do this first. Pressure data. The instrument reads zero, as it is if it were in a vacuum. Keep that. Well, we're going to keep all this on. So let's do this one now. The reflective regolith on the moon's surface gives the moon a very high albedo in most of the UV and near IR range. Science, yep, we'll check our science. Our little science junior. The high radiation environment causes a few of the samples to glow. Looks like it will be fun to paint the rocket with this. Okay. Keep that one. There you go away. Oh, well, yeah, we are in high orbit around the moon. I might send another one to do a low. Scans. Okay, so thermometer. Measuring the temperature of the space appears to be quite impossible, as there is no matter around to either be hot or cold, except the spacecraft and the thermometer itself. This is probably going to give the R&D guys something to think about for a while. Okay, what's next? Uh, this guy? Yeah. 
Uh, the data shows broad sweeping strokes of the landscape below. The high resolution scan would be more helpful, but you can probably find a suitable landing site using this data. I wonder why there's no uh, recovery for science. The top looking bay doors. Let's see how the goo feels. The goo feels right at home here. Interesting. I'll put the go away. We'll get our telescope out. Craters. Craters everywhere. Well, that's helpful. We'll put that away. What else we got? Ah, oh, the magnetometer. Weak magnetic field indicates that the moon may once have contained a molten iron core. Hmm. Intriguing. Put that away. Uh, I think that's everything, isn't it? Yeah, I've done that one. Mm -hmm. I think I've just about got everything I need now. We'll just enjoy the view for a moment. of, well, in a day or so, bringing all this wonderful sights back to Kerbin. Now, oh, uh, the, uh, the moon's surface flying by. We just reached our, uh, we just reached our periaps, and the moon is looking quite, uh, craterous and grey. And there's the very famous Kerbin rise. Well, technically, that would be a Kerbin set, wouldn't it, I guess? Kerbin rise would be in that direction. Okay. So, coming up to our burn. 12 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and burn. And cut the engine. All right, that should be us on our way home. So there's our escape from the moon's influence. We'll get rid of the menu for now. And there's our apple ups we'll add. Okay, what's up, Harry? Apps 200 and what? 244. Okay, so we'll take some thrust away. See if we can get that down. Oh, what am I? No. Wait a minute. Oh, it's because it's an impact. <laughs> okay, let's add some thrust so we don't slam into the planet. All right, let's get this down. 40, 43.89. It's a little too low for me. 59. 77. Okay. Let's add see if we can get it down to 60-something, 60 64. And I guess I'm happy with 64. I think. Oh no, momentum? Velocity, that's it. <laughs> I'm a moment brain fart. Alright. So, 32 seconds. And 20 seconds. I could guess I could fire that when I hit the apple. Yeah, no, I don't want to do that. I'll fire it when I get to the maneuver node. At least I know that I've got the maneuver node set up properly. So. Three, two, one. And we are now descending towards Kevin. So let's make our adjustment here. We'll slow our velocity a little bit so we don't go flying off into nowhere. And yep, there we go. That was a nice quick burn. So our periaps is now 67,000 meters. I could look like that. Okie dokie. Here's the sunrise. What a beautiful sight that is. Highlighting the atmosphere on the planet. Shining brightly over our little probe that it could, or at least might. 
uh, little probe here is now approaching 3,100 meters a second. Now it's kind of fast to be entering the atmosphere, I've got to say. Uh, where are we now? We are down to 85,000 meters and descending rapidly. burn off some of this, well I'm going to want to burn off all of this uh, rocket fuel in a moment. And we can, uh, do we want to keep that? I don't know. Well, okay, so let's get rid of this speed. Down to 3,000. Alrighty. Down to 2,700 meters per second. That's still worryingly fast. We are now down to 57,000 meters. We are entering the atmosphere, actually. Uh oh. Oh my goodness me. Um, yeah. Well, maybe we can use this rocket here as a temporary heat shield. Now ah, we'll just get rid of it. We got a heat shield. Now, with any luck. A few things are not going to happen. I am not going to explode because of heat, and I am not going to get smashed in the face by the uh, by the engine I just detached. Things are heating up. Man, this must look uh, this would look awesome from the ground. This thing leaving a huge trail of fire in the atmosphere as it comes down. <laughs> Please don't burn up. <laughs> it's a lot of science on there that we need to recover. 35,000 meters. At least our uh, velocity is going down quite nicely. Oh. <laughs> There's our engine. I'm surprised it's still not... Uh, it hasn't exploded. thousand meters. At least our speed's dropping now. Let's try and keep this thing pointed forward so we don't burn any of our equipment. Because the last thing we want to do is burn our equipment. One of the things I've noticed, I always seem to forget to uh, detach the heat shield once I've used it. go. Alright. We survived. We survived re-entry. Hurrah! Alright, now the next bit. 4,000 meters to impact. Uh, landing. Three thousand? Three hundred? Three Two hundred. At least our parachute's working nicely. We're down to uh, eight meters a second. One hundred meters. Oh dear. I feel like we're going too quickly. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. And uh, ooh, hey, nothing fell off. Sweet. <laughs> Alright, everything's in one piece. Um, yeah, we've got to do our experiment now. Jettison, wait, oh yeah, I still forgot to jettison the heat shield. Oh, whatever. Uh, open the doors. And we will do our uh, laser surface samples here. Zap. Zap. Close study shows that the Kerbin Highlands are composed of much the same material as the Kerbin Lowlands. Hmm. That's important information. Right. Now, let's see if the recovery guys can find this thing. After scouring the countryside for a few hours, the scientists managed to retrieve our little probe that could, and we have gained ourselves 173.8 science. That's not terrible. That gives us a grand total of 216 signs to play with. I wonder what the R&D division can do with all this data. Maybe come up with some new parts. Maybe even send Kerbals in groups 
into space. Hmm. Well, that's it for this episode. Join in next time for a potentially exciting time, maybe. But, for the moment, I will see you anon.